Welcome to this week's tutorial here on windservetoots.com. I um I've got some requests for some little bit of uh, more basic tutorials and for Windows environments and so what I wanted to do is bring you something that will probably be of value to almost all businesses. Uh, nowadays most every business has uh, either a desire or a need to really start watching what's going on in their environment and um, though I'm a Windows fan, something that Microsoft has not done very well is um, create a good way to consolidate your Windows logs. Um, they do have uh, Windows remote logging in the latest version of Windows, but it doesn't, it's a proprietary format. It doesn't work um, well with uh, other devices in the environment and things like that. Not to mention that there's been the open source standard of syslog for quite some time. So what I wanted to do is show you how to set up a syslog server with Windows and point all of your Windows workstations or your servers to this centralized uh, syslog server. Um, I will actually show you um, how I have mine running here. So if I go to my console here, um, I have um, all my logs from my systems in my environment pointing to one syslog server. So I wanted to show you how to do that. A lot of times companies have different compliance initiatives and things like that they need to follow. So um, and syslog is and logging is definitely one thing that you'll need to learn how to do. So what we are going to be using is a free tool called Snare. Um, let me just open this up for you. It is by a company called Intersect Alliance. Uh, and if you just Google Snare, uh, and essentially this will pull it up. Intersect Alliance, it's a free tool. And what we will be using specifically uh, is the Windows Agent and something called Backlog. Um, now Backlog is their free open source version of their software. Uh, snare for Windows, uh, MultiArch is the client that we'll be using. So we'll only need to install the Backlog server on one host and then um, the Snare uh, MultiArch client on all of the other hosts. So let's just get started. Uh, what I want to do is we're going to set up the server component first and we're going to install this. So the installs are actually pretty easy. Um, there's a couple little different options that you'll have to go through. As you can see, we're going to select the default. It is a 32-bit program. Uh, just go through here. The installs are pretty simple. Um, how you will manage these is via um, a, a GUI uh, for the backlog server. As you can see here, this is what it looks like. And we're going to close that out. So the first portion is that easy. You don't really need to view the text file. So that's it. That's how you install the syslog server portion. Very, very simple. Now we are going to install the client portion. And so this is something you'll need to take a look at. Do you want Snare to take over control of your event log configuration? So if you don't select yes here, what can happen is if you have group policies that are pushed down um, from Active Directory, uh, the Snare agent won't work properly. So you do want to select yes to this option here. Do you want Snare to take control over your event log configuration? That is the recommended setting. Um, you have a couple different options. You can either create a domain account. These two test servers that we're using for this don't happen to be in a domain. Uh, or you can use the system account. We'll use the system account here. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable uh, web access. Now if you don't enable web access you have to go through and you have to make a lot of these changes in the registry which is not very convenient. So what we're going to do, um, just to kind of lock this down a little bit, we are going to make sure that this host, um, the web configuration, can only be accessed locally. And we are also going to set a password on this configuration. So, you know, we obviously have to have a password to log in. It's good practice. going to, again, select the default installation path. And next, as you can see, these install options are pretty easy. Again, we don't really need to view the README file. 
Okay, and what we're going to do is we're just going to go over here and we're going to install this client on our second host because I want to show you both hosts um, posting information to the, again, we're going to select yes, we are going to have Snare take over the auditing. We are going to show you both hosts posting information to the syslog server. So just do this real quick. Again, enable web access, local only, and create this password. Okay. So as you can see, this is pretty easy to set up. Um, I don't understand why Microsoft has not done a better job at consolidated logging. Okay, so now, back on our server, what we're going to do is we're going to need to make some modifications. You see this is backlog here. We're going to need to make some modifications to our Windows firewall. Okay, and I'll show you how you can see where to uh, make these modifications. We'll do ask me later. Now, um, to do the setup uh, for these hosts, it's pretty straightforward. So we're just going to go HTTP localhost. Okay, and we're going to do, use port 6161 because that is the uh, web port that the client uses for its configuration. And so this is the username and password. So the username can be snare and the password here that we gave it. We'll just select remember my credentials. Okay, so now this is the web interface that snare presents. It's pretty easy, pretty um, simple to use. So what we're going to do is, and if you can go through here, you can see um, it's already starting to propagate events. Okay, this is just our host name here. I didn't bother modifying it. These are just some text boxes um, or test boxes, and it's already, you know, pulling these events and harvesting these events. So that's pretty good. What we want to do is we want to go to network configuration. And as you can see here, right now it's posting to um, it's posting locally. So we want to change that. Okay, so let me get the IP address of this box, and this happens to be 240. So 10.10.10.240. And what we want to do? There's a couple different things. All right. We have um, allow snare to automatically set the file configuration. We're going to select this. We are going to export the data to a file. And then we want to enable a syslog header. So snare has a proprietary format. And it has the um, standardized syslog format that you can use. I would recommend using a standardized format. Um, always, you know, it, it's a standard. It's out there. There's no reason not to use it. So there's a couple things. So syslog facility, um, just go down here and select syslog. And you're going to want to select under priority dynamic. And this dynamic will allow, as you can see, um, let me just select change the configuration so you can see what's going on. But under latest events, see we have like, um, so return codes find another one for you so warning information things like that and it'll allow those types of um, return codes to be passed on so just so you have it here you're going to post the information to the host um, and this we're actually going to change this to 514 that is the default syslog port and it runs actually on UDP um, so we're going to change that there so let's take a look at this. So destination snare server address, that is the server that you have installed backlog on. The destination port will be 514. Um, the allow snare to automatically can set, set audit, audit configuration, we're going to enable that. Allow snare to automatically set file audit configuration, we're going to select that. Export snare log data to file, that is selected and enable syslog header. Under the syslog facility, we're going to set the option to syslog and syslog priority dynamic. Okay. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make um, some changes to our firewall. So uh, if you're not familiar with the Windows firewall, um, it is another one of those things I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I personally like uh, access control lists. I'm used to the Cisco way of doing it, but 
it works okay I guess um, so now what we're gonna do is when you go to your Sys Windows firewall and you can get there by just opening up your start menu administrative tools and Windows firewall and you'll be presented with this here we're gonna right click on inbound rules and we're gonna make a new rule okay and we're gonna select a port and we're gonna select a UDP port and we are gonna select 514 we're gonna open that UDP port which is the standard syslog port and we're gonna allow the connection and um, if you're not familiar with this the domain private and public networks these are the different network types that Windows will assign to an interface so we're gonna allow this port to be open on all types of interfaces uh, let's say if you were in a domain setting maybe you would want to turn this off for private and public um, only have it available on your domain but for the, this purpose uh, since these two hosts are not in our domain we're just gonna leave these available and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, snare syslog UDP 514 okay so this will tell us that this is the rule that we're gonna be using for our syslog and it is UDP port 514 so we're gonna finish that up there and now you can see that we've added this rule okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our second host and let's see if actually let's see if we're starting to populate we should let me just minimize this and let's see if backlog and look so now you can see we've just populated an event let's see if we can uh, force this thing to populate a few more just so you can see what's going on uh, uh, yeah, there's another one that popped up so as you can see this is working um, and so now what this is doing is it is receiving um, syslog events from this current host that we're on so it's great to receive syslog events from one host but we want to get all of our hosts in our environment um, sending their event logs to this server so we're gonna go over to the second one and uh, there is un unattended installation options um, you can go through and you can do that if you have a really large environment um, where we work we actually just do this as part of the build process whenever we're rolling out new servers so uh, ask me later okay so we're gonna go to that same HTTP colon whack whack local host and again it's on port 6161 it's going to ask us for a username and password and it's snare and the super secret password that I have selected oh what did I make that password okay there we go must have fat fingered so again this is already pulling in events um, this is the software here and we're going to go through and we are going to um, you know just kind of duplicate this configuration here so our host was 10.10.240 I believe let me just double check that yep that is correct 10.10.10.240 okay so that's this is this we're going to change the default um, proprietary snare port to 514 we are going to select these options again again we do want to enable the syslog header that is important we're going to select syslog here and syslog priority down to dynamic okay so now we're going to change this configuration now what I want to show you here we are going to create a rule and our outbound rules because this is not a port that Windows will have open by default so we're gonna create a new rule we're gonna do a custom uh, actually I'm sorry just do a port we're gonna do a UDP port we're gonna do 514 because that is the syslog port and we are going to allow this connection we're gonna allow it to go out on all of our interfaces and we'll do snare syslog I don't know if I had this capitalized on the other one UDP 514 so again we know what that 
that rule is. Now we have it there. We'll close this out. Well, let's see if we start picking anything up here. Okay, here we go. Alright, so we haven't received any events from other other host yet. Let's just make sure. We might actually need to restart our snare service. Hold on one moment. So we'll go into services. And um, this is actually probably good to show you as well. So the snare service um, or snare will install a service in Windows. Um, and actually, let me show you uh, the other one as well. So services. Dot msc wait for this to open so backlog will run under this backlog service and then as you saw snare runs under this snare service so let me restart this here and see if we start propagating some events Okay, so now you can see once we've restarted this service, we started propagating events over from our other host. Now this is really awesome, right? Um, this is something that Windows does, does not do very well by default, um, even if you do use the Windows remote um, logging and push your event logs to a central host, it is in a proprietary format. Um, and so this is a really excellent way to consolidate all of the logging in your environment and it's completely free it's a really great option um, so now what I want to do is I want to show you so if you go into um, if you do configuration here there's a couple different options that you can do and I, I'm just gonna tell you my preferences so as you can see right now everything is being logged into one file um, and let me just copy this and I'm going to open up this location so you can see it. So as you can see here we have this file with the, it's actually today's date. So 2011 and it's 1228. Now that's good if you only have a couple hosts. Um, but if you have a lot of hosts like we do where I work, um, what I, I personally like to do is set the date and the system name. So each of the hosts that are logging um, they will each have their own file that they will send data to and um, we're actually gonna have to close out of here to, to do this uh, if you want to make changes you're gonna have to come up to backlog right click and do run as administrator you do have to open it in that manner so what I what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this configuration just from this little gears icon here we're gonna change to date and system and also, just so you know, um, Snare will not monitor disk usage. So um, I would recommend, especially if you're in a large environment, putting this maybe on a separate partition, not on your operating system partition, something with a very large amount of disk space. Um, and let's say if you want to change the folder, let's do syslog. Let's create a, a syslog folder here. So we just copy that, C colon backslash syslog. So do this here. So we want to change the folder, and we want all of our hosts to be logging to their individual file. So let's say OK. We'll close this out here. And again, what we're going to need to do is we're going to actually need to restart this backlog service. Okay. So backlog service, again, is the server component, and snare down here is the client component so on your server there will be two processes that are running on all your other systems that are sending logs to your backlog server there'll just be one service that you need to have running so now let's reopen this backlog service all right open this up well, let's see if we can get a couple things to propagate over here and I'm sure if we stop our service something safe like bits right we'll just stop this okay and then we'll start it let's see if that properly okay so now you can see we've had that service toss those two events over here and let's take a look and see all right eh, and you can see we've already started to propagate 
So now we, in our, we are in our C syslog directory and we have the IP address. As you can see it's the date with the IP address of the host that is sending. Um, this is the actual host name because this is the local server. So now let's say you have some sort of security event and one of your hosts, you could literally just come up here and start looking through all the events that have been forwarded. So um, hopefully this tutorial has been very helpful for you. Uh, most companies are under some sort of compliance initiative nowadays and all companies should have a centralized logging repository. Um, if you are on a Linux client, uh, most Linux boxes have a, a central sys, um, syslog sort of agent that will forward logs and you could use this for that as well because this is a standardized uh, syslog solution. So thank you for dropping by here on windservetoots.com. Again, thank you for all the feedback that everybody's been submitting. I really appreciate it. Um, we've got some cool suggestions about threat management, gateway, things like that. Um, so again, stop by the website. I will post all of this information as well as the printed directions, the links to Snare's um, PDF documents about these pieces of software, and a step-by-step -step installation guide in the rules that you will need to um, uh, change in the firewall in order for this to work properly. So again, um, do check out the website, follow us on Twitter uh, at winservetoots.com. If you like our channel, please do subscribe here on YouTube. And if you value the information, please check out our sponsors and their ads and see what they have to offer. Have a great uh, holiday season here from winservetoots.com.